Windows 11, Mac OS Monterey. Hey, how are you doing? My name is Emilio. I'm an IT pro and thanks so much for tuning into this video. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be showing you the differences between Windows 11 and Mac OS Monterey. And if you are like me, you started looking at Windows 11, you go, hey, it looks a little bit like the Mac and you may be right. It does feel a little bit more Mac-ish. Definitely Microsoft. I think are um, getting some ideas from the Mac. Uh, some people may not like the fact that I'm saying that, but hey, you know. And I mean, what is it with this whole Mac versus Windows thing? What is it about like Windows people, people who are so diehard Microsoft, 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 who just detest Apple, they detest the Mac. And what is it with people who are diehard Mac fanboys and fangirls who just are like people who are on Windows and who like Windows are just like weird, like why would you even bother? I mean, maybe it's because I'm a tech, maybe it's because I work with both, but I actually like both. I see benefits, I see pros and cons between each of these, but hey, that's just me. Hey, why don't you let me know? Let, let, I would love to know in the comments below. Are you a Windows only sort of person? Are you a Mac only sort of person? Do you like both? Do you like Linux perhaps? Maybe you don't even know what a computer is. Let me know down below. Hey, also I release videos every single week on a whole bunch of things tech. So do remember to click on that subscription button, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future video releases. Hey, so we're gonna cover 15 15 comparisons between Windows 11 and Mac OS Monterey. So number one is hardware. So hardware is different. Now the Mac has got, there's a lot. There's a, there's a MacBook, there's a MacBook Pro, there's a MacBook Air, there's an iMac, there's a Mac Pro, there's a Mac Mini. Have I missed any? But that's generally, generally where it's at. Apple make the hardware, Apple make the software. And of course the stuff that's inside the computer is not all Apple branded and there's like different brands of hard drives and CPUs and all this sort of stuff. I get all that, but generally the hardware itself is an Apple branded hardware. Microsoft, slightly different. Now, yes, Microsoft does have the Surface. They do have the Surface Pros, uh, which are a Microsoft product, but You've got all the other vendors, right? You've got Dell, you've got HP, you've got Lenovo, you've got Toshiba, you've got all these other brands that run Windows. There's a lot more flexibility on a Windows computer. And you don't even have to go to one of these big brands, right? You could go down to your local PC store, buy yourself a case, buy your motherboard, your CPU, your RAM, stick it all together, insert a hard drive, install Windows 11, and there you go. You've got your own Windows 11 computer. You can't really do that with the Mac. Now let's have a look at the desktop and the start menu. This is our number two right here. Now the desktop is slightly similar. The start menu, well, there is one on Windows, but there's not one on the Mac. On the Mac, on Mac OS, you've got a Apple logo on the very top left-hand corner. You've got this thing called a dock down the very, very bottom. Move your mouse over it and the icons get bigger and smaller. But on Windows 11, we've got the start button. Of course, this is the good old fashioned start menu button that's been available for a lot of different versions of Windows for a very, very long time. You've then got yourself a taskbar as well. Apart from that, the desktops are pretty standard. You've got icons on the desktop. You can make the desktop icons bigger, smaller. You can move them to the left and to the right. That's one other thing is that on the Windows, you've generally got the icons on the left-hand side. On the Mac, you've got the icons on the right-hand side. The next one here is the File Explorer Finder. So this is the place where all of your files and folders are stored. They're all managed. On the Windows side, you've got Windows File Explorer. Here's a nice hierarchy. You can create folders. You can create folders within folders. You can have files. You can make it look and structured really, really, really nice. On the Mac, you've got the Finder. Now the Finder is sort of the same. You've got a nice hierarchy of files and folders that you can sort of structure. On the Mac, you can easily move things around as well, and you can just sort of maintain everything the same way. There's not too many differences between the Windows side and the Mac side here. How about applications and programs? Now here's one thing that will be slightly different. You've got Windows apps and you've got Mac apps, and generally you can't install a Windows app on a Mac. You can't install a Mac app on a Windows. Here's an example. You've got Adobe Photoshop, all right? So this company called Adobe, they make some software called Photoshop to make you like, make really cool things with photos. The Windows version of Photoshop and try to install it on the Mac, it just won't work. But Adobe does make a Mac version of Photoshop. So yes, you can still install Photoshop on the Mac, 
but it's a Mac version. That's not true with everything, right? There's some applications that will only be for Windows or only be for the Mac. But if we're actually talking about what applications you actually get with Windows 11 and with Mac OS Montrez, you get a decent mail client, right? You to actually use your emails, all of that sort of stuff. You got your calendars, your calculators, you got photo and video editors and viewers, you got screenshot tools, you can do voice recordings, you've got your web browsers, you got apps for cameras, for maps, for news, for weather. So they're not too different there. The Mac, I think, I think, you now again, comment below if you disagree, I think that the Mac has slightly better uh, video and photo editing software that comes bundled with the Mac. Of course, you've got the photos, you've got iMovie. Overall, they're both really, really great. Uh, they both give you a lot of the applications that you need to at least get going and starting to do your day-to-day -day work. Here's a nice little interesting thing is that you get Microsoft Office available for both. Yes, Microsoft. Microsoft who make Windows, they make Microsoft Office, which has Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but Microsoft themselves actually make Microsoft Office for the Mac. Then we've got web browsers. You can go onto the interwebs on both Windows and on the Mac. On Windows 11, you've got Edge, which is the primary web browser that you will use to do all of your internet browsing. On the Mac, you've got Safari, which is Apple's preferred browser for doing all of your stuff on the internet. But you've got other guys, right? You've got Google, Google Mac, Google Chrome, you've got Firefox. Now you can install both Google Chrome and Firefox on Windows and on the Mac. So, hey, if you don't like Edge, if you don't like Safari, get Google Chrome and you can use it on both. Now I've opened up an application on Windows 11 and I want to minimize it. On Windows, it's on the right side. I always get confused. It's on the right side. So on the right side, you've got the little line to make it smaller. You've got the little thing to make it bigger. You've got a cross as well. On the Mac, it's on the other side and you don't necessarily have a little line. You've got now a little the little circles and they do sort of the same thing, but they're on the other side. That can be confusing. I mean, I mean, why did Apple choose, or why did Microsoft choose, I don't know who did it first, choose to put them on the other side. I think that was just a, they didn't want to be the same, so they chose to put them on the other side. What about right clicking? So Windows, you've got your mouse, your mouse buttons. There's, there's two buttons on your Windows mouse, on a standard mouse, right? You can do left click, you can do right click. On the Mac, hey, the Mac mouse looks really weird. There's like one button on there. Yeah, you can actually do right clicking on a mouse that is on an Apple. Um, it is fine, you can do it. You generally just use both fingers on a Mac laptop. You can use both fingers. So right click is there, it's the same between the two. So here's number eight. I've lost something on my computer. I've lost a file or I'm trying to find a specific song that I had or whatever. What do I use? Well, on the Mac, you've got this thing called Spotlight. On the Windows side, you've got your search. So search is great, Spotlight is great. You'll be able to find files and folders. The next one's a little bit tricky, file extensions. Now, if you know there's like a file name, right? Picture.jpg, stands for JPEG or is it JPEG? But that is the file extension. That is the sort of file that can be opened on a Windows or on a Mac computer. Now years and years ago, this used to be a massive, massive problem because a lot of files were not compatible between the two operating systems. Nowadays, you know, uh, most of those problems have gone away. So most files that you can open up on Windows, you can open up on a Mac. Image files, videos, PDFs, Word documents. One that won't work is a uh, like an application file or an installation file for an app. So for example, in, in Windows 11, you've got your .exe. It's an executable file. They won't work. They're not recognizable. On the Mac, you've got other sorts of installer files such as a .dmg file. And very similar, you can't grab that .dmg file and try to open it up on Windows. It just is not gonna work. It's a different platform altogether. If you've got on the Mac, you've got a nice video that you've created. Yes, you can export that and copy that to a Windows computer and open it up and you'll be fine. How about changing your backgrounds and your screensavers? Windows 11 comes bundled with awesome backend wallpapers. So wallpapers that are custom built for Windows 11. You can change those wallpapers, those backgrounds quite easily. You can apply a whole bunch of screensavers to your Windows 11 
whole bunch come install. You can go to the internet, download wallpapers, download screensavers, get them working on your Windows 11. On the Mac, it's pretty much the same. You just go to a different spot. You can go to the internet and download wallpapers and backgrounds yourself. You can use the screensavers that come bundled with your Mac. They're not too different there when it comes to wallpapers and screensavers. Number 11 is our voice AI helpers. They're there on Windows 11 and they're there on Mac OS Monterey. So Windows 11, you've got Cortana and on the Mac, you've got Siri. And of course, you know Siri from your iPhones and from your iPads as well. Both of them can open up apps and web pages. You can tell them to tell you the weather, you can change system settings, you can do math, so you can control your smart home devices. Both are triggered by a voice command and it's just nice because you can actually control your computer quite easily with these voice assistants. So then Windows 11 has this thing called control panel which is of course where you go and actually set up all of your settings. You can do some customizations. We talked about the wallpaper so you can access all of your screen savers, your wallpaper from there, but a whole bunch of other settings. That is the control panel on the Mac. You don't have control panel, you've got system preferences and you open that thing up and you can go in and change some settings, preferences directly on your Mac. So same, same, but different control panel versus system preferences. Now here's one that uh, a lot of people think, oh no, it's not gonna work, but it does work if there are workarounds and that is the actual drive format, USB drives and things of that nature. So what do I mean by this? So you've got yourself a USB hard drive, a USB hard drive that you've been running on your Mac. You've got a Mac, you're plugged in your USB hard drive, you're copying some files to that, and then you give it to your friend who is running Windows and you say, hey friend, plug this into your computer and get those awesome new Star Trek videos that I've just downloaded for you. And then they plug it into their Windows computer and it doesn't work, it doesn't even show up. And all that's happened here is that the user on the Mac just formatted their hard drive with a Mac only format. On Windows, you can format a hard drive and uh, you can give that to a Mac user and the Mac user could probably plug it in and it'll work and they're gonna go great. And then the Mac user is gonna say, hey, I wanna send you back some of these uh, Breaking Bad episodes and they put it up and they can't actually copy and paste it into that hard drive that the Windows user just gave them. And of course, it's because the Windows user, that USB drive was formatted for Windows only and the Mac can't write to it. And what we're talking about here is the file systems, the file formats in the back end. On the Mac, you've got the Mac OS Extended, you've got APFS, these are the two primary ones on there, and they will really only work on the Mac. But you can also format hard drives on the Mac in FAT32 and also XFAT. And those file formats are cross compatible. So XFAT and FAT32 will work across the Mac and will work across Windows. On Windows, when somebody is formatting a hard drive, they can also format it in FAT32 or in XFAT, or they format it in NTFS. And NTFS is like a Microsoft thing, and that's the issue. When it's in NTFS, you can actually read it on a Mac, but you can't write data to that hard drive on a Mac. Format the hard drives, I recommend, in XFAT, and you'll be fine. Two more to go, you've got control and command keys. So people like to copy and paste things, copy a file, paste a file. Well on Windows, it's control C, control V. On the Mac, it's command C, command V. Copy and paste is still there, it's just not control, it's command. And then you've got shortcuts and aliases. Uh, shortcuts, you know, you right click on a file, you say create shortcut, and then you get this little icon of a little arrow on Windows 11 and that's essentially a shortcut. On the Mac, it's called an alias. You right click on a file and it's the same little icon with an arrow. It's shortcut on Windows 11. Monterey has it as, uh, as an alias. Remember, I also release videos every single week on all things tech, so do also check out some of those. Thanks so much for sticking through to the very end. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time.